if you're single or if you're a couple or maybe you have small kids with you, this is the perfect little RV that you can purchase from Lance. I'm here at Parrish RV in Payson, Utah, and they have this little guy. If you are in the market, be sure to ask for Jessica. She's one of the salespeople here. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump out back. I want to show you guys this bathroom first. So out back, you do have what's kind of a wet bath, but it's kind of not, but it kind of is. So you have your toilet, and then you have your shower. And this is definitely small. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. It's small in here. But this is perfect for a 21-foot rig. Nice skylight. I'm 6 foot, and I can easily shower in here. This won't be a good shower. And then you have your vanity. This does open. Let's see if I can open it for you. So there it is. That's your vanity. There is a place to hang your towel. Small vent fan up above. And is this porcelain? That is not porcelain. This is a plastic toilet. Oh yeah, and there's power plugs above right there. Great interior design. These windows are really nice. I think they're like acrylic. They provide a clock. And then check out the trim around the slide. Huge dinette that does turn into a bed. And it has storage on both sides and below right here. And right there. And even on the top here, let's open one of these up. Nice little nooks there for you. And let's check out the roof one more time. You have lights, and they do provide this skylight. And suburban a cooktop and oven. What do you expect on a size rig like this? lights and here's some of your battery tank levels and when you open this up lights do turn on inside of here this is a nice feature to hide the microwave i personally don't like to see microwaves either so i like that they do that it's the small things that count round sink this is what you see inside of the air streams something similar to this nice fixtures and let's check out below so they do have these slide outs here they're finished in plastic. They give you three. And here's under the sink there. And here is a queen size bed. I was about to say king. And huge storage that actually opens to the outside as you can see there. JBL sound system. There is a door missing here. So this would be your wardrobe. And really quickly. I did kind of skip over the refrigerator. This is going to be a gas and electric one too. And then I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if that's for, for refrigerator 12 volt. Maybe you can run this on a 12 volt. And this is going to be for your water heater. And did I show this to you guys? I don't know if I did or not. You have some water connections down here and it looks to be your furnace but we'll confirm on the outside so they say this is not a storage compartment right there too and you do have these little sconces right there all you have to do is just push the button a blue light turns on first and then the light will turn on and then here's some of your speakers and the radio right there your jbl usbs solar and that's how you can control your AC unit. And this is how you pull in the slide and push it out. Television right there. And let's go ahead and check out the outside. I do like these doors. They do remind me of an airplane. And here is your Max Air fan right there. And I don't know if I showed you guys. Coleman Mock AC unit. Now out front, you do have a power jack through Lippert. And there is one 20 pound propane tank and battery storage. And great design on the front cap too. There's no docking lights on there, but 
check this out. This is something that I haven't seen before. This is basically like a sewer hose storage right there. And electric jacks down below, propane disconnect. And then check out how large the basement is too. Solid floor surfaces. There are lights inside this area too. There you go. And then check out these steps. These steps are through um, Torque Lift International. Safe step. Kind of unique there. And here's the entry door. Love the handle. Easy to open and close the door. They do provide a handle right there. So you do have some USBs and 12 volt plugs here. 110 volt right there. Goodyear tires, these are gonna be 15 inch wheels. ST 225 7515. Low range E with 2,830 pounds of capacity. And this is a small storage area. And you have your jacks out back too. And you have a decent sized awning above too. And then check out the rear bumper. You don't normally see that. Nice new design. LED tail lights. And then here's the slide. This is the only one. It's the Schwintex light out as well. And they do provide a slide topper too. Here's some more storage behind that dinette. And then out back is where you're gonna dump from. They have two valves here. And they have an additional valve right here for your fresh water tank. And then this is gonna be your wet bay basically. Outside shower. And this is the back of the water heater. And then this is the other side of your uh, basement area. Another light on this side too. It's gonna be your water pump. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. But before we do that, as I showed you on the other side, they have this little sewer hose storage on both sides. It's kind of unique, I've never seen that before. And as far as the gross fuel equate rating goes, it's gonna be 4,600 pounds. And you're gonna have a gross ax rate rating at 3,500 pounds, which is one. And then here is the all-in cargo carrying capacity, 941 pounds. And this is what the rig weighs unloaded right now. But let's go ahead and find a truck or an SUV that would be perfect for this little rig. I think this is my first time ever doing a Weight Watchers with an SUV. And what I normally do is I pick a truck or an SUV and I see if this is a good fit for the trail that I review. So we're gonna use a Grand Cherokee L. I think this is a perfect one for that. So what I normally do is I show you the numbers, which shows you the gross fuel weight rating and the axle ratings too. You have to keep these in mind when you are buying a trailer. And then I show you the payload capacity, which is gonna be right here. So on this SUV, it's gonna show 1,100 pounds. So just keep that in mind when I show you guys the spreadsheet. Here are all the specs for the Lance 1575, but I wanna show you the weights here. So as you guys saw, the trailer that I reviewed is heavier than one online. That's pretty typical, but what I wanted to show you was, if you take the hitch weight, this is the weight that hits the SUV in this scenario. This is gonna be 10% of this number here. So we're gonna use that maybe 11% for the scenario for the spreadsheet. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. If you are planning to tow with an SUV, you typically do have to go to the owner's manual to find like the gross combined weight rating and some of the towing capacities for individual like trim levels or engine setups. So in this case, we are gonna use the 5.7. Um, typically, you could easily get away with the, the 3.6 liter Pentastar, but I like the extra power you get and some of the numbers are increased when you get this setup here. So towing capacities here and gross combined weight ratings right here. But keep in mind the tongue weight does have something you have to consider if you are looking to tow with this. You should have a good understanding how I got most of these numbers for the Jeep, with the exception of the curb weight. The curb weight is basically 
what this sheet weighed coming out of the factory. And how you get that number is taking the GVWR and subtract it from the payload. And GVWR is the maximum allowed weight that this Jeep can carry, that's including hitch weight. Your gross combined weight rating is truck and trailer maximum weight. That's what this Jeep is rated for. Payload is basically the curb weight plus this, which gives you this. And then you have your towing capacity. This is kind of confusing, but once you go over it a few times, it starts to make sense. So one thing you have to take into account is your passenger and cargo weight inside the Jeep, because this weight, which is 535 pounds, is gonna come off your payload. So I have a husband and wife, 200 pound male, 135 pound female, and a 50 pound kid. And I also have 150 pounds of cargo. That gives you 535. So that's gonna come off of this number here to give you 565. So now your gross vehicle weight is at 6,335 pounds. Remember, you cannot exceed 6,900 pounds. With that being said, if you take 10% of this number is what we got off the line and you put that in the hitch weight column, that leaves you with 199 pounds of available payload. So in this scenario, we are good. However, nobody goes camping this way. So what we have to do is we're gonna basically max out because we don't really know what the scenario is gonna be unless we actually hook up to a trailer. So worst case scenario, you have to use gross fuel quote rating if you are shopping for a trailer. So if I take 4,600 and I'm gonna do 11% because the GVWR of this trailer would require a weight distribution hitch. So that's gonna add an extra amount of weight to your setup. So that's gonna be 506 pounds, okay? So if you figure this, you should still be under, but keep in mind, you can move some of the weight from your cargo area and put it inside the trailer. That way you can get a little bit extra capacity. So this should be a decent setup here. It just depends on your passengers. If it's just a couple with a small dog, that would work well too.